Hello fellow readers and readresses and welcome to what appears to be at this point a series on this channel where I do my monthly wrap up from my car somewhere in the middle of nowhere. This is of course because I'm visiting my family yet again but I might actually make it into a real series books in the woods. Today we will be talking about the books that I read in April and how yet again I managed to fail my TBR in a rather anticlimactic fashion <laughs> because I only had six books on it and those were Mysteries of Thorn Manor by Margaret Rogerson which was a 2024 TBR jar pick, Summer Night by Jim Butcher, which was for the prompt cards, where the prompt was, the title starts with the same letter as your name, Map of Bones by James Rollins, which was a series jar pick, The Girl in the Moon by Mark Lawrence, which was another 2024 TBR jar pick, A Little Hatred by Joe Abercrombie, which was for the mission cards, where the mission was Second Breakfast, and the prompt for it was, Read a Book Split in Parts, and The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan, which was a buddy read with Gabby from Gabby Likes to Read. I will link her channel in the video description. Now, those were the books strictly on my April TBR, but I did have three leftovers from March. Age of Myth by Michael J. Sullivan, Anne of the Island by Lucy Maud Montgomery, and Short Story Masterpieces with a Twist Ending Volume 2 by various authors. This makes a total of nine books on my April TBR, and out of those, I read six, am still in the middle of reading two, and haven't even started one. Let's begin with the one I haven't even started yet, and that is Short Story Masterpieces with a Twist Ending Volume 2. <coughs> This book lands on my TBR for a second month in a row and yet again it doesn't get picked even though I quite enjoyed volume 1 and was looking forward to reading it. So before we continue, let me give you all my excuses. And in this case, sadly, I actually have good reasons. Lately, I have been focusing more and more on my studying and the projects I'm working on around that, so I'm distracted with thoughts about that a lot of the time. On top of that, during the majority of the month and the previous month actually, I was in one of those moods where I wanted to start multiple books and just couldn't focus on either of them. So by the 20th of the month, I had only finished one book and was in the middle of reading five or six others. And sadly, around that time, there was a death in my family and that naturally took priority. All in all, I was very distracted and to be honest with you, I had even forgotten that this book was on my TBR. That being said, I am very much looking forward to reading it still and I will try to do that in May, but I'm not gonna promise anything because I don't like breaking promises. And also, I'm pretty sure you don't care. So <laughs> next, let's quickly mention the books that I'm still reading. The first of which is Summer Night by Jim Butcher, which is an adult urban fantasy, and the fourth book in the Dresden Files series. And the second one is Map of Bones by James Rollins, which is an adult action-adventure thriller, and the second book in the Sigma 4 series. So far, I'm quite enjoying both of those, and I'm gonna include them in my May wrap-up. Now that we're done with all the preambles, let's get into the books that I actually finished in the month of April, in the order in which I picked them up. Starting with Anne of the Island by Lucy Mott Montgomery. This is a YA classic historical fiction, and the third book in the Anne of Green Gables series. In this one, Anne is a young woman and we're dealing with higher education, making friends, losing friends, and the first trepidations of love. It touches on a number of other subjects as well, but just like the first two books in the series, it's steeped in coziness and dreams and simple everyday magic. I loved reading this book and this series in general, but I think this is where I'm gonna stop because I am a coward who doesn't want to see Anne grow up and have to deal with grown-up life. I prefer that she remain forever young and childish in my mind, since I can no longer be that way for the most part. I will, however, be rereading those three books many times, I am sure of that. I gave the book five stars. Next, I picked up The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan, which is an adult epic fantasy and the first book in the Wheel of Time series. This is actually a reread for me. I first started reading the series back in 2021, but ended up falling out of it kind of by accident. So when Gabby mentioned that she wanted to start reading the series and suggested we do a buddy read, I was super happy to jump on it. The first time I read the book, I quite enjoyed it, but this time around, I think I liked it even more, even though I see it short shortcomings more clearly too. For one thing, I think I like the characters better because I can kind of see the point behind their personalities, even though their personalities are still a bit exasperating to me. Which, upon further consideration, I am inclined to believe is because we tend to dislike in others the most what we dislike the most about ourselves. And I can see in those characters some traits that I have tried, somewhat successfully, to improve about myself. Secondly, I think this world is beyond fascinating and that Robert Jordan has created something really special with his magic system and his lore. Not only did he obviously consider it in detail, but he also gave it dimension, which inevitably prompts the reader to some philosophical introspection, and I always respect that in a book. I gave the book four stars, and I took away a star because I found the endless barrage of detailed attire descriptions and inns and named innkeepers and their cooks a little too much. The author definitely overindulged, especially around the middle of the book. It was completely unnecessary, and all it did was make the story drag. Still, 
overall it was a great read and I'm really looking forward to continuing with the series and hopefully finishing it this time. Thanks once again to Gabby for prompting me to start reading the series again and please go check her out in the video description. She's absolutely lovely. Next I picked up Age of Myth by Michael J. Sullivan which is an adult epic fantasy and the first book in the Legends of the First Empire series. This series is actually a prequel to the Ryuria Revelations and tells the story of the formation of the legendary empire we hear so much about in the first series. Now technically you can pick this one up first but I will still advise you to read the Ryuria Revelations before that because it will give you some much needed context for you to be able to fully appreciate the irony of this story. But let's talk about the book. First of all this was such a fun read. It features some very interesting characters and an intricate and surprising plot. On top of that I just love Michael J. Sullivan's writing. It's full of wit and sense of humor and while some of the themes of the story were a little on the nose it didn't really affect my enjoyment too much. I gave the book 4.5 stars and I can't wait to continue with the series especially because of the two big twists that we got at the end of the book and the mystery with the door. I really need to know more about that. When you read the book you'll know. Oh great it started raining. I hope the microphone doesn't catch it and if it does I hope it's not too distracting. It wasn't even supposed to rain. <laughs> Maybe I'll wait a little bit. Next I picked A Little Hatred by Joe Abercrombie. This is an adult grimdark fantasy and the first book in the Age of Madness series which follows the First Law trilogy and some of the standalones in the First Law world. Now technically you don't have to read any of the books I just mentioned before you pick this one up but I will still advise you to have read at least the First Law trilogy prior because they will give you some much needed context and will introduce you to some of the key and secondary characters in this book. Now I had no idea what to expect before I picked A Little Hatred because I stayed away from the synopsis and to be honest with you when I initially started reading it I was a little disappointed mostly because of the setting and I don't mean because of the place I mean because of the time I was hoping for a smaller time gap between the first law trilogy and this one and I was also hoping for a little more focus on magic and the past still the more I read the more I got into the story and I have to once again applaud the author's fantastic writing style and character building he manages to create such bleak worlds and such vivid characters but more than that, he writes dialogue that has me laughing out loud and inner monologues that have me nodding along with how accurate they describe the human condition, especially some elements that we sometimes struggle to define for ourselves, even whilst going through them. It takes special talent to do that. There are many chapters in this book I would like to highlight, but I'm gonna stop on one because I think it is a perfect example of one of the devices that the author likes to utilize in tense, action-packed moments. The chapter is titled The Little People and the device that he utilizes is rapidly switching between different points of view while drawing subtle and not so subtle parallels between them. And why I wanted to highlight this chapter in particular is because it featured almost exclusively random characters inconsequential to the major plot. In my opinion this helped elevate the reality of the story and allowed for a better involvement of the reader. There's a lot I want to say about the surprises we were served and the theories that I have but I don't want to spoil you so I shall leave it at that. I gave the book five stars and I can't wait to continue with the series especially if what I'm suspecting turns out to be true. Next I picked up Mysteries of Thorn Manor by Margaret Rogerson. This is a young adult fantasy romance novella and book number 1.5 in the Sorcery of Thorns series. I don't have much to say here, this was just fine, but there was a bit too much romance and a bit too little of everything else. Which I suppose is the point of a mid-series novella of this sort. It was nice to see the characters again and the manor itself proved to be quite curious. It was a bit like a romantic Harry Potter. Frankly, it's not a must read, but it wasn't a waste of time either. I gave it three stars. And the last book I read in the month of April was The Girl in the Moon by Mark Lawrence. This is an adult sci fantasy and the third and final book in the Book of the Ice series. Unlike the Mysteries of Thorn Manor, I have quite a lot to say here and therefore I think I'm gonna make a separate video on this entire series. But let me just say that I'm so surprised with this read and so satisfied too. First of all, I really liked how this series ended and the little continuation of the Book of the Ancestor story which was the series published before this one. My mind got so twisted around some of the revelations and I am brimming with theories and some further questions around the missing. The one thing I didn't like was the albeit small focus on the romance and the supposed love triangle or quadrant or whatever it was which was beyond unnecessary. All in all this was a good book, by far the best in the series, mostly because of the setting I think and it left me very excited to read the author's backlog as well as any other books that might be written in this universe. I gave it 4.5 stars and once I post the video about this series I'm gonna link it in the video description. So to summarize, in the month of April I read six 
six books, which amounted to a total of 2,603 pages. Split by genre, I read one classic and five fantasies. In terms of formatting, I read three paperbacks, one hardback, one ebook, and one audiobook. And in terms of sourcing, I owned four of the books and borrowed two. Altogether, not a bad reading month, especially given the circumstances, and it featured some very memorable reads. Please let me know what you read in April and what was your favorite read of the month. Thank you so much for watching, and if you'd like to see some of my other wrap-ups and book reviews, check out this playlist. Bye.